In this video, we're going to take a look at lighting a scene using an HDRI image, a high dynamic range image. For this video, I'm using the Limo 01.C4D scene. Uh, one thing you'll need to do is, of course, obtain an HDRI image. You can get them from many places online. One website I like is hdrihaven.com. Lots of images that you can download and use in your scene. Uh, it's a great site, very well organized, and plenty of images to choose from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the scene here. Let's let's delete the current Octane Daylight uh, node. So I'm going to select it here, choose Edit, Delete to get rid of it. So now our scene is lit with this flat gray image. I'm also going to go to the camera node here and under Octane Camera Tag, I'm going to make sure that post-processing is turned off so we don't have lens flares in our scene inter interfering with what we're trying to see. Okay, so I'll go to the Objects menu in the Live Viewer and choose HDRI environment. So the scene gets a little bit brighter, but it's still kind of gray. So let's select that Octane Sky tag and go to the Environment tag, click on Image Texture to connect an image texture, and then let's click on this button to bring up our file browser, select the HDR image. I'm gonna copy to my project directory, and you can see it's in the background here. So I'm gonna go back to the uh, environment tag. You can see that we have power here, so we can adjust the power of the image. You can also adjust the power on the image texture tag, but just make sure that you keep track of where you're adjusting it. Because if you adjust it in two different places at the same time, it's going to get confusing. You can, of course, also adjust the gamma. I like to set the gamma, at least for this image, to 1. But let's try and stick to making most of our changes in the uh, environment tag here, so we don't get confused. Uh, we can also rotate the image, so I can use Rotate X here to rotate the image. And you can see that it's reflected here, like on the head of the robot, if we rotate it around. You, don't want to, you can rotate it on the Y direction, of course that's not very helpful in this scene. Let's just stick to rotating the X. Okay, so the next thing I want to point out is this type option here. If I set this to visible environment, you'll see that it's in the background, but it's not being reflected. It's not actually lighting the scene. That gray image is lighting the scene. If I expand visible environment, we can turn it on so that it is visible in the reflections and in the refractions. Uh, but the actual lighting is still coming from that gray, uh, flat gray image. Uh, so how is this useful? This is useful if you want to actually combine the uh, Octane HDRI image lighting with your sun and sky lighting. So let's turn off reflections and refractions just for a second here. Go to the objects menu and choose lights, Octane daylight. So now we have Octane daylight. And I'm gonna zoom out here and find the transform for the Octane daylight. I'm just moving it up here so it's easier to see as I start to manipulate it. So let's see if we can get this kind of thing going. So at the moment, it's parallel with the ground, which means it's not really lighting the scene. So if I start to rotate, well, it is lighting the scene. It's just like an extreme uh, angle here. If I start to rotate it, we can see it's lighting here in the scene. So now we're getting the benefit of that back plate, but the lighting is coming from the daylight tag. Of course, we can go back to Octane Sky, and if we want those reflections and refractions, we can turn those on as well. We also get these nice strong shadows, which are a bit harder to get when you're using an HDRI environment. Of course, the trick is you want to make sure that you match up your lighting from your uh, daylight with your HDRI image. So at the moment, we have the Octane Daylight and the Octane Sky, but you can see that they're not quite lined up correctly. Our shadows not coming in the right direction um, for our Octane Sky. So here's a trick you can do to kind of help these to line up a little bit. I'm going to select my Octane Sky. Let's set the power like really, really low just so it gets a little bit easier to see what's going on. And let's rotate this around a little bit. 
So the sun should be kind of like around there. Now let's select the Octane Daylight and I'm going to turn on Mix Sky Texture. And set this to Visible Environment. So now we can see there is the sun in the sky and we kind of want to have it maybe down here or on there or something like that. So I can rotate this and see if I can get it to match a little bit better. Okay, so maybe something like that. And uh, if I set this back to primary environment, it's gonna light this scene. Of course, now our lighting is a little bit dark, so I'll go back to Octane Sky. Let's set the power back to one. So now we're getting something that's a little bit more believable. But let's say we want to rotate the sky and keep the sun in the same place. I'm gonna take my Octane Sky and make it the parent of the Octane Daylight. So I'm going to make Octane Daylight the child of Octane Sky. Select my Octane Sky. And then go to the coordinates section here and then use this to actually rotate the sky. And you can see when I do that, since the sun is a child of the sky, it rotates along with it. That's kind of a nice handy trick that you can use. So that's the basics of using an HDR image to light a scene in Octane for Cinema 4D.